I have um, the country's Minister of Information and Communications, Mohamed Raman Swawe. Good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening, sir, man. I have the Deputy Director of Public Education and Outreach at the Anti-Corruption Commission, Al Hassan Kabo. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for having me. I have um, lawyer Soi Sengbe Augustine Mara. It's always good to actually call all those names. <laughs> of course, um, he's um, a legal expert and a democracy advocate. Good evening and welcome to the show. Thank you, Samuel. All right. Um, the last man to show up in the studio, we will still um, we'll welcome him when he comes. That's the mouthpiece of the Opposition All People's Congress Party, um, Sidi Yaya Tunis. He said he's on his way coming. But we have to keep the conversation going. Um, let me start off with you, um, Al Hassan. When um, first it was on a Monday, it was postponed to a Thursday. And the Thursday was again not successful. You didn't get the interview. Uh, first off, as a commission, what um, did that present um, to you guys? Well, clearly it presented a major challenge mm. because we had scheduled ourselves to meet the former president. His Excellency Dr. Anas Bankuma, to obtain statements from him regarding series of allegations, bordering of abuse of office, abuse of position, uh, money laundering. These are the broad aspects we are looking at. Mm. And um, you cannot proceed with an investigation against anyone if you do not have the opportunity to confront him with those allegations. So what is very key, and the commission has always established that, we are proceeding on the presumption of innocence, respecting the constitutional rights of everybody we are talking to, that they are presumed innocent until they prove otherwise. And um, we will do the needful, which is um, obtain a statement from them, which is part of the fair hearing process. These are all enshrined in the constitution. Fair hearing does not only start with uh, trials, even the processes of investigations themselves. So we would proceed. We're still negotiating with uh, the lawyers of the ex-president. Um, I'm happy to report that even the commissioner of the ECC had spoken with the ex-president on those issues. And we find an amicable solution to determine time and place to take the interview. What is certain? is that the ex-president has committed himself. He has further recommitted himself after the McKinney incident to talk to us because he respects democracy, uh, accountability, and rule of law. So would uh, Just out of curiosity, uh, this is another investigation. The former president was investigated at the commissions of inquiry. And um, judgment has been made because I'm pretty sure that the white paper um, carries um, the weight of the high court. Judgment has been made. And um, so if um, that has been done, it w was there a need to go again and investigate him? Or um, were you just looking for um, a way to say, okay, the commissions um, of inquiry did not do their job, so the <coughs> ACC should go on and do their job? Or the commissions of inquiry did a very good job, which the yeah. ACC should just follow up on? Um, it's, it's interesting. First of all, let me establish that we had been investigating certain <coughs> matters even before the commissions of inquiry started. Mm. That is one. Number two, some matters we are looking may overlap with that of the commission of inquiry. Mm. Number three, the, the, the scope of investigations are not the same. Mm. We are undertaking criminal investigations with a view to prosecuting mm. if there is sufficient evidence. Now, what the commissions of inquiry were doing, these were not criminal investigations. Mm. They can recommend for seizure, right? But we have the powers to investigate criminally and to prosecute. And we have to understand that our broad mandate under Section 7, specifically paragraphs B and C, we are mandated to investigate all instances of corruption whether they are referred to us by an authority. Mm -hmm. In this case, they are referred to us by the COI. Now, we will not depend on the COI investigations alone. Like I said, we are a criminal investigations institution. Mm -hmm. The standards are not the same. 
we have higher, higher standards because these are criminal investigations. So we would look into them and see whether there is a breach of the Anti-Corruption Act <coughs> of 2008. Mm. And the other thing we need to establish, we have to understand this. When it comes to the prevention, investigations, and prosecution of corruption, the ACC has exclusive jurisdiction. In effect, it means no other institution has a mandate to investigate anything that's border on touches of corruption. For instance, if the police or any other law enforcement agency is investigating a matter and they come to the conclusion that this matter borders or touches on corruption, they are mandated to <coughs> stop that investigation and refer the matter to the ACC to the extent they've investigated it. So the ACC will take control because we only have the, the right to investigate. And the Constitution was clearly amended mm -hmm. when the 2008 Act was introduced. If you go to the amendment, uh, I think it's section 66 and 68, mm -hmm. it talks about the ACC having exclusivity, mm -hmm. that uh, law officers department can prosecute all other matters except anti-corruption matters. So whether they are referred to us or not, as long as we know that this thing might border on touch up on corruption, it's our mandate to take control. I, I, just um, quickly, in 10 or 15 seconds, in your estimation, was there a need for the commissions of inquiry? Because, like you mentioned, all cor corruption uh, matters are criminal um, matters, and so it's only the ACC that has the jurisdiction to investigate and prosecute them. Was there a need? Because um, these are cases that have been looked into already by the commissions of inquiry, white paper, governor has accepted, and uh, um, the president has instructed the attorney general and minister of justice to implement fully. Was there a need? Commissions of inquiry, uh, uh, part of our governance system, mm. whether the need exists, that has to be determined by the Titian government, mm -hmm. the estimation of the Titian government. It was right to establish a commission of inquiry. Okay. And the ACC do not see any duplication in that. All right. I, I just want to um, seek clarification from the um, mouthpiece of the government. Mm -hmm. um, when um, Al Hassan was making his submission, he mentioned um, that the ACC has the, so, um, the exclusive right mm. to deal with um, corruption matters because um, they are criminal in nature. Mm. And um, I think in the White Paper, um, or in the report, um, the, the recommendation to ban um, public um, officials who served in the previous government mm -hmm. um, was rejected. Mm -hmm. That recommendation was rejected. Um, so does that mean government just, um, is just looking at restitution and not um, criminal? Um, and not the criminal aspect of it because um, now the ACC is going to look at the criminal aspect and definitely <coughs> the government rejects. If those people are, are found wanting, then they would, have to be, um, the, 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 they would have to be called criminals. So the logical, the logical next question will be, mm -hmm. how did we get from there to restitution mm -hmm. and to the other bit, right? Um, the ACC yes, has primacy in investigating corruption and other issues. The same constitution empowers the president to set up commissions uh, like right noted when he so desires, mm -hmm. when there is a compelling need mm -hmm. for it, which was happening in this situation, yeah? So the ACC, um, the Audit Service Commission, and such other bodies that fight corruption are playing complementary roles. Mm -hmm. They should not be seen as, you know, um, variants working as cross purposes. Mm -hmm. They really complement each other. That's the whole point. You know, and why this is very important for us as the government is because um, According to a PFM report, um, which was done by Carl, um, Christian Aid, and some other organizations, Budget Advocacy Net Network, between two years, 2016 to 2018, right, you find out that something like 10.45 trillion was lost cumulatively, you know, um, monies that could have been used to deliver public services, right? I mean, this, that's, that's the amount between 10.45 and 15.9 trillion. You know, that is, it's almost unpronounceable. That could have helped provide clean drinking water for many communities. It could have helped provide schools, school buildings, and enabling teaching and learning environment in classrooms, particularly in far from communities, right? So that <coughs> is what makes it very serious. I see from campaign days, candidate retired Brigadier Julius Madabiu had made the fight against corruption a priority. He had always reiterated that corruption was choking the development process. Corruption was the reason why people go to hospitals, they cannot have access to basic essential drugs. 
corruption is the reason why we are where we are on many, many um, global development indexes. So therefore, you know, he vowed to fight against corruption once elected. So that was quite a major attraction for the people of Sierra Leone that made him vote for him, amongst other reasons. So in his inauguration, you see, he also said he was waging three democratic wars, one of them being the war against graft, the war against corruption. So this is part of the war against corruption. You know, um, you know this was Charles Taylor, um, back then the Liberian rebel leader, former president. He did say, when fighting a war, you don't discriminate where you get your arms from. It could be... I mean, you want to fight graft, you could use commissions of inquiry to complement the efforts of the ACC. You could use the Audit Service Commission and all other bodies, you know, the coalition of the willing, to ensure that we exercise this demon from the ghost of our, our body politics. Let me just quickly um, get um, what's government's position um, following what happened um, in McKinney and Cross Street? Well, um, that was a, a tragic failure of leadership. Understood. That was an affront to democracy. It was a personal day for our democracy. Mm. I know those people did not materialize to block roads, to use the kind of incendiaries they were using. <coughs> For the most part, this, this was very, very well orchestrated, premeditated, because days before that, we had seen masquerades arriving in McKinney, that was on social media, right? And we were forewarned. So that was sad. I mean, they were mobilized. So hundreds of Okada riders, these are people who act out a living by their trade by riding their Okadas. Many of them have um, their principals they have to pay money to. They also have to save some money for themselves and their families. So somebody must have underwritten those costs. So they were mobilized, in some cases drugged, right? And the sad thing is, these mobilizations are not usually done by grassroots people. They are done by well-placed people who have access to resources and other means. Yeah. So the sad thing about it is that those unsuspecting men and women are made double victims. One, they are victims of bad governance. That is why they are where they are. Many of them with huge potentials cannot complete universities, cannot have access to jobs, cannot start families, right, as a result of bad governance. Then, when we call for democratic accountability, people go to mobilize, they go to their ethnic cocoons to mobilize support, right? We think this is very sad for our democracy. This country is highly respected um, for having done several democratic transitions and for putting the building blocks of democracy in place. So for that spectacle that I saw of, you know, in McKinney, that, is a very, that was a very sad day for our country, and I think we deserve better. And worst of all, you know, I mean, this is a moment of truth we have to speak out. I just saw a leaked um, interview um, between, a leaked conversation between the Inspector General of Police and the former president, um, Dr. Anes Baikroma. In that interview, they discussed various things. But what, 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 what appalls me is the fact that he was, he was suggesting alternative means of doing an interview with him, but at no point could he speak to the issues raised. The barricade around his house, the lawless young men and women that are gathered there to raise me hand, and I listened to some of those things. Very despicable things. Did, did that breed paranoia in your, in your sense? Say? Did that breed paranoia in any way? No, 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 I know this was orchestrated. Okay. This was very well orchestrated. It was well funded, well oiled, well energized, right? In every sense of the word. Right. Monies, incitement, and everything, which is not healthy for our democracy. All right, let me um, you welcome the um, National Publicity Secretary of the Opposition of People's Congress Party, Sidi Yaya Tunis. Um, good evening, and thanks for coming. Good evening, thanks for having me. All right, um, Augustine, let me, le le let me have um, your, your, your take, your, I mean, um, I, I just want to, if I have the button to activate your legal art, <laughs> to do so, especially with the issue of um, the COI. Um, the COI, the, the, I mean, the three commissions have completed their pr the, the processes. They've um, come out with, with, so to speak, a judgment that now um, people should just implement. And if they have, um, if those who are found wanting have issues, they should just go to the appeals court, like the president mentioned. There is uh, a redress mechanism, the appeals court is there. And now the ACC is saying they, sti they need to investigate former President Kuruma. First of all, wh what's the balance there? I, I think, um, let me firstly disclose that, you know, I was one of the consultants that crafted the national anti-corruption strategy for the next five years. Mm. You know, so I'm very, very much associated with accountability process. You know, so far so good. I think um, the 
um, anti-corruption vision is well in place. Having said that, let me also disclose that I am acting as counsel for the Sierra Association, file papers against the commissions of inquiry. Specifically, because um, we thought that the, the rules of procedure and evidence ought to have been formulated by the rules of court committee as the constitution of Sierra Leone provides. Those rules were not formulated and ends our application to the Supreme Court. We filed, I think it was on the fourth day of January 2019 and the clock is still ticking on that process. Um, having said that, the findings are out and in so far as the findings and uh, you know one would not comment you know because um, they are subject to an appeal process but suffice to say that it <coughs> is my view and you know i stand to be corrected on, on this but i you know as a constitutional um, um, scholar myself i think there is no difficulty in the reading it says if it's an adverse finding, then that finding would be characterized as a judgment of the High Court. An appeal shall lie as of right. Mm -hmm. So that appeal that is mentioned in the Constitution is a constitutional right of appeal. It's not one of those um, um, appellate rights in other subordinates legislation. It's a constitu constitutional right to appeal. So what that means, therefore, if the COI was investigating a particular subject matter and the COI has arrived at a certain conclusion as per their findings, and that finding or those findings are adverse to a certain person of interest, then that person of interest has a right to appeal that particular finding, which is obviously adopted by the government of Sierra Leone. So within that interim and between the, the period between the High Court and the Court of Appeal, the period of appeal is, is three months. And that particular subject matter, and, and I had Mr. Kagbo say that there were some other issues that did not fall within the remit of the commissions of mm -hmm. I, I can agree, those issues, they, they are very well, you know, they can proceed on them. But those issues which were subject matters of the COI proceedings cannot until the period of appeal elapses. They cannot be subject of investigation by the ACC. If that happens, it's a serious breach of constitutional right of appeal. It's a simple um, constitutional provision. They can, they have a wide range in power, as he mentioned, to investigate all other issues other than those issues which were subject matters of the COI. And until that period elapses, the ACC does not have a jurisdiction to investigate. It's clear in the Constitution, there cannot be another interpretation of that provision. So um, outside money laundering, for example, that I have, I have gone through the report, the, f the white paper, and I did not find that. Outside money laundering, wh what are the other um, things that the, 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 the former president should answer to? Mr. Mawa here talks about jurisdiction. Mm. Mr. Mawa, I quite agree with some of the things you said. But on this specific issue, I totally disagree. You should understand that there were issues that were referred to the ACC by the COI. It means the COI did not reach a very a definite determinant on that issue. So they were sent for further investigations. There were some matters which the COI took decisions on. For instance, the seizure of certain properties. They took decisions on that. And the ACC has no business with those properties or the processes leading to that seizure. Mm. We're not involved in that. It is only those issues that are referred to us and those that have been investigated independently before the COI concluded. So that is the issue. Okay. We have so to understand that. Yes, so no, go ahead, go ahead. Please, I beg of you. Even the reference, 
even the reference. So, for example, if they were to refer a certain matter to the CI, the reference itself is part of the findings. So, if I were to challenge that reference by way of appeal, then the very reference itself is subject to appeal. If I'm counsel for that person, I would even challenge the reference to the ACC. So the reference in and of itself is a subject of appeal. And you cannot, even the reference, so you cannot initiate a process when the reference, the process of requiring or initiating the ACC um, investigation is a subject of appeal. And I agree with him, if there are other issues that are not connected in any way, shape or form, they can, they have every right mm. to investigate. I have but a all Yes, I, I think we're on all fours on that. Mm -hmm. But all other issues which were, whether directly or remotely connected to Could issues mm. which were being investigated by the COI until the appellate process concludes, the SEC cannot initiate investigation. I disagree. Yes. Well, let, let me be part further. Mm. Yeah, of course. If you <laughs> think that uh, what was referred to us, we do not have mandate to look at them, even though the COI could not conclude, could not conclusively reach a decision on them, therefore they needed further investigations, we must look at them. And let me also tell you that Section 77 of our Act imposes a duty, an obligation, on all bodies, be it the police, the Commission of Inquiry, uh, the, 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 the Commissioner General of the NRA, if they are dealing with any matter, and they notice this, and they notice, sorry, mm -hmm. that this matter touch, touches and borders on corruption, they are mandated to refer the issue to us. The law says they should stop the investigations <laughs> and refer them to us. Now, I agree with him, they could go to court and appeal that ACC has no jurisdiction. Then the court will look into it. The court will make a determination to say, okay, ACC, stop investigations on this matter pending appeal. No. In the absence of that, as long as it has been referred to us, it is within our legal mandate to yes, look so at it as the law prescribes. No, no, but, but, but Samuel, did yes, the, yeah, I will give you a bite. Let me just. Yes, yes did the quickly. COI, any of the judges, did they um, um, alt any of these um, investigations to say, oh, this falls outside the remit? Well, they clearly, and they clearly, they clearly, they clearly noted. No, because no, no, when no, once you conclude, Mr. Uh, Minister, sir, okay. when once you conclude mm -hmm. and make them part of your findings, they're subject to appeal. If you alter, and I agree with him, if this, they were to stop at a certain stage and say, oh, this can be investigated by the ACC, ACC would have then unfettered That is the implication of that. Is because they did not conclude. That is because the COI did not conclude. They said they did not have enough time to do that, so they referred the matter to the ACC Augustine. That is that's what they said. That's, that's what, what they said. Okay. There's no conclusion okay. on them. I think the parting point. If there are conclusions on them, what are the no, conclusions? No, no, the parting point Do is you know the conclusion? if you were to stop before the findings. Oh, you don't even do findings. No, no. You don't so have to. Okay. okay. You I don't have to. Okay. Um, let me. Uh, I want to. Yes, yes. I'll give you. Go ahead. Go ahead quickly. Okay, so, so, so. You know, I'm not a lawyer. I'm smart enough to clearly understand that um, you speak about um, the rules of um, court committee. Sure. Agreed. Sure. I mean, that is something that ought to have been done since 1991. Mm, it's right. never been done. In the absence of that, you know, as, as, as a lawyer, um, that the presumption of regularity should, should um, happen, right? Because you have challenged it in the Supreme Court. There has been no ruling on it. I mean, the various councils representing persons of interest raise it. I mean, there are matters were adequately dealt with and disposed of. So until we get a superior ruling, the findings of the of, 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 of the commissions we hold. I, mm -hmm. I agree so with that. So let's stop that. Um, going yeah. around. Yeah. No, I just okay. mentioned. Oh, you, you know, just mentioned. I just mentioned. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, Sidi Ayatunis, um, first off, let's go to what happened on Thursday. I mean, um, as, as, as a mouthpiece of a party whose, um, whose leader and chairman is being investigated in the capacity of former president of the Republic of Sierra Leone. And um, with, of course, government thinking that um, that particular act was premeditated, it was deliberate, and um, the guys were mobilized, and obviously it happens in the stronghold <coughs> of the APC. What, um, what's what's the, the, the position of your party? Um, in the first place, uh, let me make it very clear that as a party, we know um, 
and we, we, we want to categorically state that uh, when it comes to issues of uh, accountability, uh, it is non-negotiable. Let us be very clear on that. And that is why even where we had issues with the COI from the inception, uh, we still, as respecter of laws, subjected those who are named persons of interest to be represented at the COI. And uh, when, the when the reports were out together with the white paper, the party made its position very clear. We still um, held on to our initial position that ab initio the whole establishment was faulty because uh, it violated certain aspect of the constitution. And we raised series of questions as to the implementation going forward. And some of the things that uh, we are arguing about now, you know, we had raised these concerns before because mm -hmm. we knew that with the absence of uh, the rules of evidence uh, to have been set up by the rules of committee, some of these are um, you know, uh, things will emerge. Um, having said that, um, those who are named or who are indictees in that, uh, in the white paper and the reports, they understand the party's <coughs> position when it comes to uh, accountability and transparency. And that is why all of them have committed themselves into um, subjecting themselves to any investigatory body, any day, any time, including the former president. If he had followed, um, you know, conversations, uh, the release from his office uh, after the incidents on Thursday, he had recommitted himself to meeting with the ACC any day, any time. And even on that day, he was ready, he was committed, he made several efforts to ensure that uh, the interview happened on that day. Uh, you know, I, I arrived in McKinney at about 10.30 because we were told that the interview was supposed to have taken place at 11. And I will say here honestly that uh, when I arrived, I drove to the residence of the former minister. And at the time that I arrived, of course, he had youths already, you know, around the perimeters of the fence. They had placards, but there was no roadblock. That I can say here categorically, there was no roadblock absolutely. And, you know, later we saw videos and I made inquiries as to what led to that particular incident. It was spontaneous as far as to what the explanations were. When the youth saw what go ahead, go ahead. When the youths the youths, according to what I had, mm -hmm. saw two large trucks of OSD approaching fully armed OSD approaching. So they moved immediately and blocked the road. And you know, the OSDs professionally were not confrontational. When they saw that, they turned around and they moved away. And immediately after that, they dispersed the roadblocks were taken away. That is the explanation that I had. Of course, we saw the video circulating. Mm -hmm. And that is why as PR of a major party like APC, I never use social media as my source for facts. Never. I don't because the, the communications on social media is completely different from the actual visual or press or communication when you are present. Mm. That is why I don't use social media as my source of fact. Now, I've, we have seen a lot of um, and heard a lot of accusations as to who was behind that particular act. Mm. But again, as political party, we have been raising concerns as to the intent of this whole COI, uh, ACC investigations, white paper. And when you begin to put the pieces together as to communications that you know, came out from even the ACC office, why is the lawyers representing former president was, we are busy engaging the ACC uh, investigators that went to McKinney as to how they can work together to go ahead with this interview. And when you, when you also piece together a press conference held by a certain group of organizations that call themselves civil society, and the utterances that were made prior to even the interview day, and then now when you piece together all of the press releases that have come out from various um, state institutions since Thursday, you begin to wonder where the orchestration 
or the, the plans really came from. The ACC have been engaged with the legal team for President Kroma for over a week before Thursday. They have been talking on phones. They have been communicating among themselves, trying to figure out how this whole thing can happen. There has never been a leak. A single phone call between the former president and the IG of police is leaked. And from that phone conversation, you now see a particular line that people who are commenting on this leaked phone call have held on to. So all of these things are, are very suspicious. Just, you know, so it, so, so it begs, you know, what are we really trying to achieve? Uh, oh, are we, are, are we, you I, know, I, I, I just, I, <laughs> no, <laughs> just quickly, <laughs> let, let, let me go back, let me go back, let me ask um, um, Tunis this question. Um, the fact that um, the, the, the um, ABC is saying that, um, well, of course, you've not, um, you've clearly not come out as, at, at this point, well, for the, during this interview to actually um, say whether or not um, those guys were mobilized. You said it was spontaneous. And yeah. um, the, the, the government mouthpiece is saying no. That, that, that was a, a mobilized crowd, of course. People, people funded it. People funded the, the, the yes, thing because insights, enough so, insights. So, so all of these things, and with the, 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 the different um, incidents you've cited, the press releases that have been issued by different institutions and CSOs and all of that, could that mean um, young people, correct me, young people in Makeni who feel um, that they should support um, the former president because it's be, um, he's been treated unfairly uh, or disrespectedly, um, that we should, we should give him the respect, we should protect him, so we're not going to allow any, um, anyone to come and talk to him. W was that the case? That is one aspect of it. It also mm. means that when it comes to dealing with um, issues of this nature that involve people of that caliber, we have to be very uh, mindful how we handle them. We have to, of course, one, use our discretions, and also maturity is needed. Mm -hmm. I mean, let us say it is not impossible for anybody, even if not presi former President Kroma, of anybody at, uh, with that stature to have people mobilized in their favor because they are in a situation like, like this. Mm -hmm. Let me take you back to a similar case. A couple of months ago, a senior of, uh, government officer was alleged to have been involved in some money transfer that uh, amounted to over a million dollars or so. What happened after that? Um, the ACC, weeks later, came out with a statement that they found nothing. That was good. I mean, they went about it, how they went about it, what they did, nobody knew. Whether, in fact, they investigated this person, whether they spoke to this person, Nobody knew, but what happened again? Followers of this particular individual wrote press release demanding that that particular, they call themselves council of chief, demanding that that particular individual not be investigated and you know, showing solidarity. Now, if that person was living in that particular locality and ACC was to go there and interview him, as in the case of uh, former President Kroma, it is possible you would have seen some, some sort of mobilization mm -hmm. like that. So these things are not strange, but the way we handle them, taking out suspicion, taking out tensions, and trying really to get to the bottom of this, that is what we as political party have been pushing for. I mean, some of those press releases that came out, they were first of all so, so short of facts. They were biased. They were finger pointing, you know, and, and all of those, you know, will not really help in getting to the bottom of it. And that is why, as a party, we will continue to commit to this whole issue of ACC investigating or COI, you know, going ahead. And let me also address something else. Quickly. We have seen ACC saying they are dealing with issues other than, you know, issues mm -hmm. in the CUI, but the, lo the lawyers representing former President Kroma will tell you that the invitation letter sent to him clearly state that they want to question him on findings relating to the CUI. Except, you know, if I'm wrong on that, their representative is here, but mm -hmm. they will tell you that clearly. And so for us, 
like we have been appealing. All we are saying, we are not against COI or commissions or investigations, but let, let it be done in a way that the outcome will be acceptable, mm -hmm. it will be within the confines of the law, and that those persons who have been named are not, you know, being, you know, maliciously targeted, embarrassed, uh, you know, just because they belong to a certain political party okay. or certain... All right. Uh, on the issue of the cases, I'll I'll come um, to um, these two guys. Um, but just quickly, um, a CD asked a question mm. earlier as to, I mean, mm. what do you guys stand to gain? Because um, if a CD is saying that the, the, the defense um, that the young people put up... Um, in favor of um, former President Koroma was spontaneous because they feel like former President <laughs> Koroma is a towering figure and definitely he still commands g um, great respect and uh, following amongst um, Sierra Leoneans. So it was spontaneous because I it was never planned. No, I mean, CD and I have sparred on many occasions before elections, during and after. I see he struggled to say that because he knows it is not true. I mean, that mobilization happened a lot of resources were put into it. Even the blind and deaf could see that. I mean, the people were mobilized, masquerades. I mean, we are talking about sac accountability for God's sake. And you say Soko Bana. Soko Bana accountability. I mean, this is democratic accountability. And I still remember the former president in 2008 made a very inspiring <coughs> speech about corruption. <coughs> he said he was going to ensure that corruption was dealt a little blow. That anybody who had anything in their closet, that closet be open so that they could do the needful. So I am surprised that we have had to now have rules of, I mean, we we'll probably need rules of engagement for this again to be, to be, I mean, this is simple. When people, people lesser, people of lesser caliber are in similar situation, they do not prescribe to the law. Again, I agree, he's had a long years of national service. I mean, the Anti-Corruption Commission has bent over backward. He has given his own time and even there, you know, for merely saying, subject yourself to democratic accountability, we have uh, we have almost a declaration of war in Makini that day, right? People, I mean, this is fact, and I know this is not something you want anybody to hear, that you said it was it was, it was was spontaneous. Masquerades uh, from various parts of various assortments were brought in. Two or so days, we are, Sori and I are on some public fora. The, the pictures <laughs> were shown there, and we, we all saw it. That is fact. Right, youth Okada riders who should be busy ferrying people from one place to the other had all been paid off, yeah, to look after um, their their principals and their own, right? Enough food, drugs, and all of that, you know. And the sad thing is, like I mentioned, these are victims that are suffering double jeopardy. They are where they are because of bad governance, right? Many of them have enormous potentials, huge potentials to realize that to to become anybody they want to become in life, but sadly enough, they are where they are, and as if that is not enough, we use them as human shields, we drug them, bribe them, and subject them to all, put them in harm's way, sadly enough. So I expected to hear a few moral voices, and that is why I fault former President Kroma. If he says he had no hand in the mobilization, I mean, just in case he says that, but he has missed every opportunity to condemn it, to use his towering status in McKinney, to assuage the youth, even if they were spontaneous. And I listened to you, by the way, CD, I listened to your BBC interview. <laughs> you know, I, I, I listened to you struggling to say there were no roadblocks, and you still repeated the same thing. That roadblock started in the morning. I followed it. We have listened to the police. Yeah. Nobody's relying on social media to say all of these things. These are facts. Everybody saw them unfold before our very eyes. And it's, it's sad, it's sickening, that at the time, this government is investing so much in trying to, to enhance the welfare of young people, we are still trying to doggedly, you know, retrogress them, All right. which is not good for the health of our democracy. All right, um, Alassane and um, Augustine, le let me read an excerpt from the statement um, from the office of H.E. Anes Baikruma, former president of Sierra Leone 2007 to 2018. And it says, the public is hereby reminded that the Sierra Leone 1991 Constitution, Section 149, Subsection 4, provides that the findings of a commission of inquiry have the effect of a high court judgment and can be appealed. But even though he has instructed his lawyers to accordingly file in an appeal, the Anti-Corruption Commission, ACC, has, in a curious turn, given indication that it once again wants to open an investigation into the same exact issues already dealt with by the COI. 
this unusual action notwithstanding, former President Koroma has um, acceded to the ACC request for questioning as a mark of respect for a state institution he empowered during his tenure as president of this country. So it goes back to the fact, uh, according to uh, President Kuma, the ACC is still going after him for the very issues that have been investigated by the COI. Alassane, before Gustin can come in. <laughs> All right. <laughs> on this gentleman. It's yes. sad because, I mean, as a Democrat, democracy um, activist, um, without prejudice to what I said about, you know, the right to appeal mm -hmm. and the ACC lacking jurisdiction during that interim, you know, let me say that it's, um, it's always good when they summon our leaders to account. It's always an impressive process. Mm. Right? Um, whether ACC after that interview would continue and would, you know, come to, to, to a place where they would, you know, charge the matter to court, it's, it's another kettle of fish altogether. Mm -hmm. But just a spectacle that a once president of the c continent being investigated, right, is, is, is a, a clear message right you know down to people who are mm. at the bottom of our society that our leaders are not beyond reach in so far as accountability is concerned but having said that let me also say that the incident in mckinney could have been handled more um you know um, 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 for lack of a better word it, it was not handled properly by mm. both parties right Firstly, I think that um, <coughs> um, the former president has, you know, a huge onus to ensure that we maintain the peace. You know, you know, he ruled the country for mm -hmm. over over a decade, and it's incumbent on him to ensure that the peace that he fought for, the peace he sustained during his tenure, that peace is kept. You know, and, and I think that um, a clear could be a one-liner, clear statement to those chaps who were, you know, around his, um, you know, premises. Mm -hmm. A clear message to say that I have inv invited the ACC officers and they're here to obtain a, a statement. Can you kindly ensure that the process goes on? I think that clear message would have um, pretty much, um, um, you know, um, um, he, he, he would have, I mean, and, and that's that's what I feel, yeah? Has been a clear message to the supporters, you know, those chaps, you know, to say that the president is very clear and he supports accountability process. Le, le, can I just take you quickly yes. on, on, the leaked, on the leaked conversation between the IG and the former president? So... The, 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 the former president said, of course, he's committed to peace and quiet, which he fought for for a very long time, and he maintained um, right. the, for, for, for the two terms he ruled. And um, as a result of that, of course, the IG, the IG knows he has been to that place, even on that worse um, situation. So the, the IG should use that technique, which he used the last time to just <laughs> get things done. <laughs> so, so with all of those things, um, wh where do you see... Um, the, 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 um, the, the former president to have, um, to have come in to ensure that um, irrespective of um, his statement that he's committed to accountability and um, he's a law-abiding citizen um, in as much as the things that he has said are all politically motivated but he wants to follow the law. He, wa he, um, he, 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 com he commits himself to peace, quiet and no, all no, of that. Simon, what, what I was saying <coughs> basically that the former president's commitment to accountability process is not under question mm. at all. He said that um, in his statement, he said that in that leaked audio, mm -hmm. you know, I listened to it. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, um, even during that audio, there was no commitment beyond uh, my commitment to the accountability process. And, you know, that fine balance that could have been struck 
with addressing the IH youth mm. to say, look up guys, these guys are here to obtain statement for me. And by the way, it's not like um, a media organization that is seeking to um, interview someone. Mm. It's, 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 it's a state institution that has mandates to investigate corruption without prejudice of what I said, yeah. you know, in terms of jurisdiction and what, what have you. Ordinarily, they could be, and he could have, you know, um, assisted in the process to get the ACC officers and the police um, um, detail come to, to his pre premises. Um, you know, personally, I would say that um, there was little done on his part, right? And then secondly, I also feel on the part of the ACC that there could have been more engagement in terms of venue. Mm. I think it, 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 it was a blunder on both parts in terms of the former president not, not sending a clear message to his supporters, to his well-wishers, et cetera, et cetera, that this is an accountability process. It's not an indictment. It's not a conviction. The ACC is merely initiating investigation. Nobody's about the law. Certainly, nobody's beneath the law. What, what, okay. what, yes, go ahead. You know, um, in his expose, the comedy also bordered on the issue of uh, jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. He said in the interim, the ACC must not do anything. But again, I want to remind you that if you go to Section 7 broadly, our mandate is not conditional. No, no, no. It does not depend on anything. It does not say you suspend your mandate bending A, B, C, D. Hmm. If anything, it's the reverse. It's saying any law enforcement institution or anybody set up to investigate anything, you are due to bound to report the matter to the ACC if it borders on corruption. Mr. Mm -hmm. Kabo, we're talking the about the you're Constitution. Making. You're citing the Anti-Corruption um, Act. The Constitution is the primary, it's the basic law. And that constitutional right of appeal is in the Constitution. No other provisions in any other But by opening investigations would, would not be the that. processes of appeal. No, no, no. I don't see any contradiction there. Because the ACC is investigating, the ACC has not said you do not have right to appeal based on the findings of the COI. Let's don't alternate No, they there. said interference no. with right to appeal. Well, if you initiate investigation. No, no, there's no interference. Because the investigations would not be by anybody from appealing the findings of the COI. We have to understand that. And when these matters are referred to the ACC, we don't take them hook, line, and sinker. There is still, crucially, the presumption of innocence. So why didn't the ACC um, investigate during the pendency of the COI? Why well, didn't we were investigating quietly. We didn't come out. Like I told you, <laughs> when we, we don't, we don't. No, 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 no sorry, sir. You, exactly. You're on the floor, sir. Thank you very sorry. much. When we started this conversation, mm -hmm. the very first point I made is that we are investigating series of issues, mm. some of which we are touched by the COI, some of which are not. So we've been, that we've been investigating does not mean we have to say it publicly. Criminal investigations, we control the information. We come out when we think the time is ripe. Because we came out now does not mean the investigations yes. have not commenced long yeah. before now. That's quite a dramatic coincidence. It is not a dramatic After the well, end of the COI know, process you, and you, then you, know, you, so you, are, you are subject <laughs> to your interpretation of the things we do. But you, you are just second guessing us. We determine how to enforce our investigations. I accept the fact that you are interested in issues of accountability Sorry. and I respect your contribution to issues of accountability. Sorry. But because I respect you, does not mean you are right in this case. I beg to differ, sir. The issues are not the same. One is not substituting the other. Both can go complementarily. No, no, that's not correct. Well, I, well, you know, let's, we, we can disagree. Well, I think we have to, we have to move on and leave that for the, for the courts. But just quickly, uh, 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 Mr. Kabu, the issue of what happened in McKinney, the issue of what happened in McKinney, let's go back. Ca um, would the ACC also take responsibility? Because um, we were here, I was here with the commissioner, Francis Benkelfala, um, in one of our, our breakfast shows, and we were discussing um, when... I received a message that, oh, um, the ACC has agreed already to move the, 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 the venue to the residence of the former president. And of course, the um, commissioner said, no, they've not reached, at, at that time, they've not reached a decision. But it, 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 it was out in the, in the public already. And of course, um, I also interviewed um, your immediate boss, um, Patrick Sandy. And um, on the, the, the um, Thursday morning, on the on phone for update, and of course, 
um, the ACC has agreed that they were going to interview the former president um, at the ACC office in McKinney. So what went wrong now that led to the interview um, um, that was supposed to, to be held in, in, in the, uh, at the ACC office too? Um, the, the, the former president's office. Can the ACC also be, be held responsible for, for all of this? Uh, I don't know. You've not established the points in which the ACC did something to provoke any of what you've been saying. As far as what you told us about the leakage, mm -hmm. that uh, the ACC had already agreed at the time when the commissioner was on the studio. Yeah. So use the opportunity to correct mm -hmm. that and say, no, no. So what tells you there are so many information and misinformation that are going on. So we have to understand that, look, the commissioner expects the ex-president. He expects his contribution to nation building. Mm -hmm. He has said that over and over and over and over. The only reason the ACC wants to talk to him is that there are allegations against him which the ACC intends to confront the, the former president, His Excellency Dr. Alice Michael Omar. Mm -hmm. So let us, so that we can hear his, his version of things. And what is also key about investigations the, the object of investigations is not only to prove that someone is culpable, right? It is also to disprove allegations against anyone. So we may not have an opportunity to prove or disprove such allegations if we do not talk to the people of interest. Hmm. And the ex-president has committed himself to that. At no point had he said, I will not cooperate with these investigations. He has told us, he has spoken to us, his lawyers have spoken to us. He has gone outside his way to talk to the commissioner. So he's willing, he told the commissioner in uncertain terms, that I'm willing to subject myself to democratic accountability. I think we should calm down the tensions and the nerves. I'll in engaging. Let me bring in CD, forgive me. Now, coming down the, the nerves of um, perhaps supporters of Sierra Leoneans in all of this, um, the former president saying the, the, this whole thing for, for him, um, it's a charade, of course, it's politically motivated. Then again saying, well, I'm still committed to, to this process. Um, it, wh 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 do we, where do we um, get the, 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 president, the former president to stand? Where do we get, wh where is he right he now? Has, <coughs> he has stood always for, for, for law and order, mm -hmm. for accountability, for transparency. And that is why in all of his conversations, whether it was with the ACC, whether it was with the police, whether it was with other stakeholders, even to us in the party, he has made it repeatedly clear that he is ready, he's able, and he's committed, even though he knows that this is done to maliciously target him, tarnish his character, you know, uh, muddy his, rep his good reputation that he has built over the years, but he's still ready just to let the people of this country and the rest of the world understand that he's a respecter of the laws, he's a respecter of the rule of law. And let me say this, mm -hmm. I, 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 um, you know, I know that for us young people, when we find ourselves in a situation like this, we want to, you know, build our own reputation, make names for ourselves. But I know this whole thing could have been handled better, and it still can be handled better, that which is why I'm very pleased that the ACC is still engaged with the uh, lawyers representing the former minister and the commitment to ensure that this interview goes on is still there. I only hope that those of us who have nothing absolutely to do with this investigation will back off <laughs> and allow the ACC and the lawyers to continue in a manner in which, um, you know, at the end of the day, they will you know, respect the provisions within the law. They will have time to, to, to deal with the issues and the matters fairly and judiciously, you know, and also the comments that we send to social media, we have to also stop, even us as leaders. Because I, I, I remember on the same Thursday, um, when the ACC was busy engaged with the lawyers of the former president, I saw a text from the commissioner that says, the cleansing of corruption in Sierra Leone continues in Makeni today. I mean, text messages like those, in as much as I understand his zest to fight corruption, but text messages like those even sends the wrong message. You know, so, so I, I just hope that going forward, we can all you know, act more maturely in using our discretion. And uh, probably we watch our, languages 
properly so that uh, we do not create unnecessary tension or we do not uh, create a situation wherein people misconstrue or mis you know take our uh, um, messages in a context that they are not supposed to be. And I want to draw, I wa also want to comment on one thing that I've been hearing throughout this process. Which is? And which is why we continue to be very worried as a political party. This issue of children or people being used as human shields. Because I was just <laughs> going to ask, <laughs> you know I was going to ask that <laughs> question. <laughs> now, I was going to ask that question. There was a, there was a report <coughs> from IGR that um that of course the the report um revealed that um you, the opposition is using supporters as shield or strongholds to escape accountability and um so if we go back to what is happening i i, I normally share uh, um, an ex um a story from umar Fofana when he was covering the war according to him um he will be with um for Sankor. um outside for Sankor will tell his guys cease fire but when he goes in he will tell his guys go and fire. So, and now we are seeing the APC saying it is committed to peace. It is not um, using um, its supporters or its membership, whether sympathizers, to go and support them. Um, of course, we've had public statements, but it's that's the reality. Is the party sincere in that drive? Come on, Sam. It c that could not be. I mean, we have been through the whole commissions of inquiry for a year. Mm -hmm. Nothing of such ever happened. We subjected our <laughs> the persons of interest, even where we disagreed with all of the, pr the, the, the procedures used to establish, mm -hmm. even where we disagreed, people were subjected to, you know, they, com they were represented by lawyers, their cases were presented, and even where the evidences presented against them were flawed, but at the end of the day still accepted, uh, the outcome is out. Even where we disagreed with the outcome, we still have not refused to adhere to the constitutional provisions of sec uh, section 149, which gives them the right to seek redress in the court of appeal. And that process is on. We have had no uh, uh, instigations, no incitement whatsoever from any of the persons of interest, let alone from any member or senior member of APC as a political party inciting or saying we will not accept. We made our position very clear but have always insisted that we will adhere to the rule of law, constitutional provisions, judicial provisions, and we have called Sorry. repeatedly yes, that uh, this whole we have called right. repeatedly that you know this is an opportunity. It, this whole issue could have been a novelty for this nation, because this is the first time that we have seen a commission of inqui uh, uh, inquiry at this scale, at this scope, a whole government was brought under um, you know, scrutiny for public accountability. This is the first time. So if this whole process is done within the provisions of the law and the outcome is accepted by all and sundry, I mean, it could have been good for this nation. It could have been good for even those of us who served in the previous government who are now under scrutiny and probably those who are serving now, which okay. is why we'll okay. continue to plead mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. government and all those involved, that let us go back and clean up this process, let it be done within the provisions of the law, and let us allow judicial uh, 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 provisions okay. to set in, so that so at the end of the day... So uh, as you know, respond to Sini, let me also ask you this question. Mm. Again, I will cite the IGR report that yeah, revealed um, what government is doing, the tensions in the country, is because apparently government, <coughs> again, is framing national policies as tit for tat, so um, you're going after you're going after these people because of what they did. So again, this could be a reason for the tensions for people also um, wanting to say, oh no, they are coming after us. So it's deliberate on your part as government. No, so I, I, I uh, before I before I respond to that, let me just speak to my brother. Did make a very important point mm -hmm. um, that those who do not have anything to do with um, the feature interview of the former president should really stay clear of it. So that advice is for somebody like him who traveled from all the way to Italy <laughs> to go to Macken, arrive there even before the interview started, and to all the other people that have been so mobilized. I mean, that makes a lot of sense if we do that. I mean, this is a very civil process, question and answer, and you know, the president has, the former president has been accorded due cost. Mm -hmm. I mean, he requested a venue, um, you know, 
the ACC bent over backward, they are backward anymore, all of it, right? So that will continue to happen. So, but there's, there's, I want us to rail, rail the discussion. It's getting derailed. It's beginning to look like some political party mm -hmm. matchup, this, mm -hmm. that, that. Um, I speak for government. Mm -hmm. This is not an SFPP APC business. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have to make that categorically clear. Yeah. During the commissions of inquiry, no persons were summoned because of their political party, their ethno-regional, and other consideration. The commission's mandate was clear for people who have been president, vice president, ministers, deputy ministers, um, heads of commissions, and departments and, and agencies. It has it did not mention APCR. So nobody was summoned. Nobody was summoned because they are SFPP or APC. This mm -hmm. was for people who had served. So the commission's mandate was very, very clear. And why we must discourage the ethno ethno regional thing creeping into these investigations is simple. Mm. I mean, this is common sense. When people misappropriate or mismanage state resources, or when people um, corruptly enrich themselves, they do not do so for themselves. They do not do so for their ethnic groups. They do not do so for their political party. They do not do so for their region. They do so for themselves and their immediate families. Which is why I very I feel very sorry for those group of young men and women that I saw on that day. They have been systematically, clinically mobilized, incentivized, right? And they are double victims, sadly enough. So like my brother alluded to in a vain fashion, the former president missed a historic opportunity to have entrenched his statesmanship credentials. You know, you all know he's a towering figure in McKinney. He could simply have said, look, this is an interview that enhances our democracy. So he noted, he set up the ACC, strengthened them, so this would have been a great opportunity to come clear, stand now tall and towering again. All so right. The opportunity was missed. Okay. So the yeah, question okay. of framing um, national policies. Yeah. Okay, national policies. for tat. No, I mean, this is, this is a joke. Tit for tat. Tit for tat. Nobody has done tit for tat, but I understand why these are, these are being said. We have a generation, most of the, even the authors of that report um, were born in a generation where no former um, president has been arranged to give account of their stewardship. So this is strange for many, many people, right? On the scale, like my brother, um, Mr. Timis himself mentioned, this is strange to many young people. Around the world, this is commonplace. In Zambia, virtually every succeeding president, you know, has, every succeeding president has had to be commissioned, mm -hmm. right, to give account of their stewardship. So this is how they are able to entrench and enrich their democratic credentials. This is all we are saying. Nobody is doing it for tax, right? I mean, in 1967, for example, you were too young. You might not know this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me where I was. Go ahead. <laughs> See, you should not ask me. I was not born yet. Go ahead. <laughs> no question. Alaska, no, so no. you know, you know, you know what that means. I was not even born yet. So no really, question. Go ahead. So all of you guys here, I mean, I'm using the family ordinance. Right? I'm the only person who has the right to talk Go about ahead. this. You know, we have seen commissions in the past mm -hmm. in those areas. And I was also not around by then. But we have all read about it. People were paraded, some of them, bare feet. Yeah? Through the process. Very humiliating, very excruciating. Right? We ensure this being the 21st century, um, and the government that prides herself, um, for its sterling democratic record, we ensure that every process here, right, respects fundamental human rights. In spite of what the naysayers had said before the commencement of the commissions, nobody was lynched, nobody was intimidated, nobody was refused fair hearing, right? So it's not tit for tat. If it's tit for tat, that is the way we could have gone. Okay. Because SLPP people, if you know, I, mean, I, I said this is a national discourse, we are not doing partisan, mm -hmm. lost property, went to jail time and all of that without all of those processes. But this is the 21st century. We are committed to enhancing our democracy and this is a new di di direction. <coughs> okay. Everybody will enjoy the fruits of that. All right, le le let me bring in our viewers and our listeners quickly. Um, but uh, the, the, the commissioner for the Anti-Corruption Commission just tweeted saying, mm. I challenge all lawyers to provide a law that says anyone is given 90 days to appeal against CY findings. It does not exist and it's misleading. There is no such provision in any law. 90 days pay only is a grace period provided by the government and not um, <laughs> law or confer <laughs> a right. I know you would want to respond no, no, to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm responding. I'm 
<laughs> some other problems. Yeah. Let me bring in um, Peter Beckley Sr. is saying, I am in total solidarity with members of the civil society, especially IGL, Carl, CGG, and minimal and special respect uh, for Andrew Lavalier and Ibrahim Tommy, who have come forward and loudly condemned the McKinney incident and have called for a resolute con um, conclusion to Anne Skoma's conduct so that state sanity, authority, and control will be restored. We are generally aware of um, what authorities have power to request and are also aware when authorities overstep their position, but we did not see any overstepping of authority in the ACC action against Anne Skoma. Any citizen in Sierra, Leone, um, in Sierra Leone right now would be making a dangerous mistake if you don't realize that ultimate power and authority is vested in President Bio alone. Um, I will not go to the, to, I will just go to the quote. Um, Peter Kors, um is quoted by Peter saying, the um, measure of a man is what he does with power. This may be the test for President Bio to use his power and authority for all to um, see and recognize. And uh, also the number is 025-271-959. 025-271-959. Um, I'm going to try as best as possible not to go through the political messages. <laughs> um, there are so many hundreds of them on Facebook. And um, it's tough for me actually to be skipping them. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Minister, present your evidence about how people were paid off to mobilize around uh, the periphery of former President Kuruma's um, Resident um, Kento Betts is saying, um, um, now all Okada riders have become EBK's motorcade. Dean Fadelba is saying, James Emos um, Kabu is saying, if the SLPP government has no hands in the various, um, okay, this is not what we're discussing. We're not discussing killings of um, people. Um, Joseph Koka is saying, why should President Koma condemn now? He has been quiet for over two and a half years now. You guys were not saying he should talk. Okay, Ambassador Mike Joseph Kano is saying, don't you think um, this back and forth business look confusing between the ACC and um, the COI? The ACC does not have um, adjudicating power to go through someone after going through the COI. Should we revert to ACC again? Um, that's a question. A.G. Lawunde is saying, um, Chinese has been um, biased here. I hold no respect for people who can point out the truth. Um, Ernest, um, okay, Kamal, Kamalo, that is too harsh. Samuel, please ask the minister that during the arrest of Lima, when people mobilized, um, it was the plan. <coughs> you see the chairman of SLPP, Napoli, Good evening. another social. Um, okay. I'm calling. Good evening. I'm calling from Freetown. <laughs> Go yeah, ahead. My contribution is just quick. Two things. Please be audible. One, please. if the people in McKinney actually blocked the road, then we, were, we, all of us, including me, I'm expecting the former president should have sent someone to go and stop the guys so that they will clear the road. But if the road was not blocked, then there is no need we should ask him to apologize or say something else. That's part of the former president. But when it comes to the ACC and uh, the government, let's see the truth. I think ACC, the government, and civil society, all of them hyper the situation. This is something they shouldn't have been talking about. It should have just been in secret until and unless maybe somebody else hear a rumor that, oh, President Kumar was, former President Kumar was interviewing his house. But it was on radio, it was on TV, it was on newspaper, it was everywhere. Civil society too. So you develop the momentum. Who do you blame? Why now do we have to put it on their neck that the former President Kumar should come down? Everybody saw it on newspaper, on TV, on radio, everybody. We are going to ask Mr. Bean. It's not, it's, not, it's not more than anybody. It's not bigger than anybody. It's not this. He must come. He must see. So what do you expect? I think the government too has a big blame. Let's say yes, I'm hearing civil society and everybody bashing at the former president, including me. If the road was blocked, you should have sent someone to go and clear the road, let the guys come in, let them come and do this still so big interview and go back. But the government has a big thing to blame. When people you know most special sometimes when you're driving and then there's an accident, the police they charge you. They take failure to avoid. So I think the government will be 
develop this momentum. That's just the truth. Thank you. You're welcome. It's zero two five two seven one nine five nine. Rumarong Brahma is saying, "Do not underestimate the power of the ordinary people. Critical thinkers understand that Sierra Leoneans are not defending the former president. Sierra Leoneans are enforcing checks and balances in the system because the institutions responsible for check and balances have failed Sierra Leoneans." Um, this distraction strategy. Hello. Good evening. Yeah. Good evening. This is General Fula calling from Kosota. Go ahead. Uh, hello? Go ahead. Hello? Go ahead. We're getting you loud and clear. Hello? Okay. Um, Paul Kanu is saying this distraction strategy would not, wo um, would not work, sorry. If you guys are serious to fight corruption, please, we're begging you, start by cleaning your slates. Um, okay, the names are too... Um, you, like I hello? said, please, we don't have proof to think. Yes, good evening. Hello? Good evening. Hello, caller. Yeah, good evening. Your name and where are you calling us from? Um, I, I'm ATK. I call from McKinney. Go ahead. Um, I just want to do light on this issue of the McKinney issue with EDK. Of course, just as the previous speaker said, you know, there are certain times where we make things then become very much fearful in the eyes of people and we are ordinary citizens. If ACC for camp or can interview uh, BVK based on corruption issues, you know, the way we have for not able to present this particular uh, media and all other things, probably just look peacefully in a way as if they just try to can get statements from us. But we see the particular statement for issue and outcome become something like where people let they talk like we then get an inner mind or they get a different plan apart from the statement we then say. That thing can bring the too much of people and for can get concerned. Say, mm, this may be it might be then they can take the leader for go do and something else. Or maybe then they come just for time in the name of statement taking, but a different plan in the car. Because we may see civil societies and all the rest, I can even mention somebody like Sanos and all the rest. The way how they be talking on radio on this particular interview. That creates the panic on people. And remember, Alexei Koma is not only a former president, but he is a leader of a meaningful and notable political party. So you see, if we keep on doing things, at least we have to make the things so much in that condition where people then that they become afraid of the issue. So please, we want if we really think that like this, they go on to other leaders and now, whether they want to interview them, they become something where they put in a low profile form, at least they go and conduct the interview, whatever be the outcome, they make the people they know. But the tension was too high. That can bring even the people that when uh, illiterate people then for become very much panicked. That day, if you can a market, you see shops, the lock, everything was closed. You know, not to say that like them one for celebrate, but some people we are in fear. Remember, a past incident we don't happen on generator issues. Now, McKinney, we can bring people them for that. So, some might be the prepared, they are the children and me, oh, while all the use them, where they don't see and say, they are unnecessary, they are like, they like them, go for politicians, they don't care. Then took over the streets and go do anything they feel for do. You know, but in a sense, please, me, they put as a low, but they put a low profile on issues for interview other stakeholders. They all know say there are people of interest in the country. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. So we're going to make it um, easy. Unfortunately, for those who've called, um, already they've enjoyed. But those of you who'll be calling now, you're going to get a minute. So we'll um, accommodate five more um, calls. So five minutes. So when you call, you just state your name, where you're calling us from, and go straight to your contribution. The number is 025-271-959. Jennifer M. Y. Um, Tengbe is saying, um, good evening. Yeah, good evening. How are you? I'm okay. State your name and go straight to your contribution, please. Yeah, please. I'm Tijan calling from Kingtown. Just quickly, I want to make my contribution. Um, it is really appalling to, to see such behavior in McKinney because we, as a civilian union, we're supposed to put peace first and put our country at heart. So really, I'm pleading to people who are living in McKinney to please abide by the rules to maintain peace and solidarity in the country. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Jennifer M. White Tembe saying EBK had the opportunity to encourage his supporters to stay back or back off. But he wanted to prove he's in control, <coughs> yet comparing it to the protests in America. Who does that? He's a statesman. He should act like one. Obstruction of justice was clearly his motive. Um, 025271959. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. How are you? Please state your name. Where are you calling us from? As you go from straight. Both, tell you. Thank you. Go ahead. Yes. The issue we have from Namakini is damn too unfortunate. Would they expect the former president for them to give a statement, encourage the ACC for question them, a day in statement, where everybody go not say, uh, go look at and say maybe innocent or maybe you know, innocent. But for try for fair way for stop them people and for let them not go see them. Encouraging supporters and maybe secretly behind the in behind the inside and the So me believe say whatever been done happen in nobody that is supporter and in even financial. Yeah, so it's the actual way happen. Now after everything, we see inside the compound pan, 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 where they send now then WhatsApp group then where they match with some of the supporters they, they go and laugh, then they go and jubilate. Just after that incident. So we know they na in support them thing and they na in finance them thing and they will make the thing go so. Thank so you. Na in, na in, in order to cooperate. Thank you. Thank you. Zero two five two seven one nine five nine. Um good evening. Good evening. Okay. <laughs> I think you, you want to you want to have a very good um, conversation with yourself because you, I think you're having fun hearing yourself on your TV or radio set. And um, if you want to have a very good conversation with us, please move away from your TV Hello? or radio set. Good evening. Yes. Good Hello. E good evening. Hello. Okay. Um, it's it's simple. When when you notice that we've picked your call. State your name, where are you calling us from, and go straight to your contribution because you have a minute. And we're going to accommodate three more calls. Hello, good evening, AYB. Go ahead. Hello. Okay. I think we're going Hello? We might hold the calls there. It's simple. When you call, as soon as you realize that we've picked your calls, please state your name, where are you calling us from, go straight to your comment. You have a minute to do so. Please. Please, please. The number is zero two five two seven one nine five nine. Um Hello? yes. Hello? Go ahead. Hello? Okay. Um the ACC investigation of the chief minister um was done out of pu the public's eye. Why was the former president not accorded the same courtesy? Um when a matter is in court, it should not be discussed anywhere or the matter is um prejudice. So ACC cannot investigate a matter that is in the that is in the court of appeal the acc letter sent to the lawyers of ebk referenced the coi okay um the number is zero two five two seven one nine five nine. asana to kai kai saying what is bringing our country to its knees is explosive social media propaganda from all angles oh. everything about the st um, the state and public is made as if the country is going to war good evening oh. right why the ACC um, allowed itself to be carried away? Why interrogate? Why interrogating EB, uh, interrogation? Don't uh, it EBK's house? Aruna by Sisi saying um, this activist is struggling to condemn the acts manifested by the youth in Makeni Sad. J Alfonso is saying um, we should stop calling people. Um, Okay, I'm not going to go through that. I'm sorry. Um, please, I'm going to tell City that the youth of this country say uh, lives matter after 10 years in power, but there is nothing to show um, to show for Mohammed Indulo Salia. The issue of stopping ACC not to perform their duty is unacceptable and unfortunate situation, and the day of impunity has gone under the new dispensation. We must draw line on corruption in this country. The law is supreme and it must be respected. Amara Alpha. Um, he's a popular figure and I've worked hard for the nation. Arun Pape is saying, um, John Kanu is saying, it is the democratic right of the people of McKinney to assemble and protest against the selective injustice against the former president. 
Ambassador Mike Joseph Kanu is saying investigation, a replica of what the government spent um, zillions investigating through the Commission of Inquiry. Please don't forget Section 149, Subsection 4 of the 1991 Constitution, which, which gives power um, of the High Court to the Commission, thereby subjecting all legal disagreements with any of the outcomes to, court, to the Court of Appeal. For the sake of transparency, the ACC can reference the report where it is connected to the subject of um, interest of the ACC. Thanks. And, okay, I think I'm going to take three more messages. Um, that would answer, like saying, really, um, um, Bio's strategy, known only to him, is active to the extent of all moral guarantors like CSOs, religious leaders, etc., that none of them will never mention any good of Ibiki rather than always standing behind his government, regardless of the irreversible unconstitutionalities with impunity. It's really sad for EBK. Um, you guys um, stop playing with the emotions of people. It might turn to something else. Joseph Koka is saying. And the last message I will take for now is saying when, um, okay, I'm not taking that. I'm sorry. I'm uh, reading the comments here and the <laughs> interesting. The messages on Facebook uh, speaks to how polarized um, Sierra Leone is. Lawyer Mara always um, struggled to lambast former President Kuma, but so quick and sharp to lambast the sitting president. Mm -hmm. He's always critical of this government. He criticizes um, everything this government does whether good or bad. He has amputated um, President Bill several times and even said, <laughs> no, I've never heard him say that. This tells um, you that we have two APC mouthpieces in the studio. Interesting. I read that um, um, deliberately because also w there, there were messages here for me last, last, last weekend and I had to read them <laughs> that I was siding with the APC. Of course, uh, they, they took me away from the SLPP last Sunday. So it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to allow you guys to respond to um, some of the messages. I'll, I'll start with you, um, Alassane, from the side of the ACC. We have to establish that the ACC has mandate to do what we are doing. It's very clear. My reference point is Section 7. Section 7 says, even when those, ref those matters are referred to you, mm -hmm by a body set up to investigate everything, or things we pick up for ourselves by investigators. Now, we have to understand that these matters are referred to us based on what the law says. Now, I quite agree with um, the Constitution being the ground norm, that any law that is in conflict with the Constitution is null and void. Can, I, can I quickly help you? I, I mean, just out of perhaps you would say this is biased, but I also want to help you because your commissioner is sending in a message. Yeah. And he's saying, Samuel, the law says there is an appeal as of right, uncontested, but no one has to wait for 90, 90 days. days. 90 days is a grace period to pay, but the findings can be immediately enforced, except there is a stay for execution in the court of appeal. Go ahead. So <laughs> Go ahead. No, 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 the <laughs> argument is not shifted. The commissioner is not arguing that there is no right to appeal. Hmm. He said there is right to appeal as of right. But to say that um, it is 90 days period and the suggestion that if the 90 days period has not expired, the ACC should not do anything. Hmm. So that is why the commissioner is coming in to say, no, <laughs> you have a right to pay within 90 minutes. Hmm. Within this right, you can still appeal. Hmm. You understand? But the, 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 the 90 days is not suggesting that no other or the ACC should not continue with his work mm -hmm. until the 90 days, which is the grace period, according to that interpretation, mm -hmm. to appeal takes effect. So the, the, the long and short of what he's saying, yes, you have right to appeal, but it does not say the 90 days has to expire, expire first mm -hmm. before uh, the ACC can make any intervention. So that is what the commissioner is pushing. Okay. And like I told you, the, the, the very first aspect of our mandate is to investigate all forms of corruption, even those referred to us. And let us not look at this thing within the scope of uh, ex-president Kuruma alone. We are dealing with a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. A lot of other people. So it's not restricted. And, and the, 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 the moves we are making are for everybody. You understand? Mm -hmm. But I understand because ex-president Kuruma is a very important person in this country. So anything that borders on him would raise more attention than any other person. Mm. 
So we accept that. Do you understand? But the ACC has no intention to return to anybody. The ACC will pay, play fairly. The ACC recognizes the role President Kuma has played to our democratic dis dispensation. Mm -hmm. And the ACC respects that. But if the ACC has questions to ask, the ACC will ask those questions diligently. Mm -hmm. And that is the only thing we are pushing. And like I said, my brother here quoted the Constitution. And there's no doubt. The Constitution is the ground law. It supersedes all, all other laws. But this same Constitution was amended to give the ACC exclusive jurisdiction in 2008. I mentioned section, section 66 and 68. In those sections, it was very clear that the, 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 the office of the AG or law officers department can prosecute all matters except anti-corruption matters. So the same thing has been given effect even within the, the Constitution. Mm. So we have a mandate to do our job. But equally, there are the court system. If, we, if anybody thinks that uh, the ACC has no mandate to investigate, as you've said, you can challenge that in court. Move a motion to challenge that in court. When the court so instructs us that based on the construct of the Constitution, we are excluded from making any interventions until the night today's period expires, who would you expect that? Okay. Augustine? Uh, I, I think first let me mention that <laughs> anyone who knows me would know that during the APC regime, mm -hmm. I wrote quite a lot against President Koma. I mean, to a point that, you know, I, you know, then states that there was this time that we had the bar station dinner and I was um, approached to be one of the MCs, myself and my friend, Julian Cole. Mm -hmm. I declined because I had so many opposing views against President Koma. I was going to be um, the <coughs> chief um, special guest of honor. I said I cannot, you know, because of my opposing views, I cannot share a platform, you know, because I was against many of the things that were happening under his regime. Mm -hmm. And I've... Um, maintain pretty much same and similar stance against President Bio. Mm. Um, I don't have anything against the president. As a matter of fact, I participated in the crafting of the national anti-corruption strategy. Like I mentioned, I am all for accountability process. Now that said, let me state that um, I, 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 I note that the the goalpost is being so dramatically shifted. <laughs> First, we're saying that a, uh, the, the ACC has jurisdiction, they can move in, they can investigate, et cetera, et cetera. Now what is being said is that, oh, there's no stay, which is a brilliant, that, that's what we call sophistry. It's a brilliant <laughs> argument, I, I but it's so, to that, it's so hugely deceptive. <laughs> Here's the point. Let's expect, sir. Any practicing lawyer knows if I have a judgment, that is adverse to my client, and that client has a 90-day period. I'll come to the provision, which the com commissioner note, noted in, you know, in his um, tweet, mm. that there is no indication of a pre period. So it's some Father Christmas gift being given by the government to persons of interest. That is not correct. That is not correct. Now, I'll come to that. The point I'm trying to make is that in ordinary practice, when once you have a judgment that is adverse to your client, you file a stay of execution application, you serve that on the under sheriff, even when there is no stay. The very fact that you have initiated a stay of execution process served on the under sheriff, the under sheriff would not ordinarily proceed to execute that judgment because a process has been initiated. And by the way, the Anti-Corruption Commission is an integrity institution. That integrity institution is bound by the Constitution. You know there's a constitutional right of appeal. You know that they have a period of th um, three months. And that period is not in the Constitution. And that's why we were paid as lawyers. Because you can't find everything in the Constitution. If you come to me, I'll refer you to the law. It's in the Court of Appeal Rules, Rule 11.1. It sets the period. The Constitution cannot hold everything. The Constitution basically is an abbreviation of all the laws, our rights, et cetera, et cetera. So that tweet that says you will challenge 
every lawyer or any lawyer to show him the period, let him go and read the Court of Appeal rules, Rule 11 1. It sets the period. So, my point I'm making, you need not wait for the state of execution application to be made. Because what that means is that at the end of the day, if you've initiated investigations, you've spent so much money in conducting the investigation only for a lawyer to apply to the Court of Appeal and then be granted a stay of execution, you would have expended money, expended resources. Why not wait for the entire appellate process to conclude? Okay. And then you would be in a very firm um, 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 ground to say, mm -hmm. we as um, 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 anti-graft body would move in to investigate this particular matter since appeals have concluded. Worries? And I feel it's, an yeah. it's, it's a Worries? serious breach. Uh, let him land, let him land. So 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 I, I feel it's a serious breach mm -hmm. of constitutional rights. It's not one of those legislations where they would provide you have a right of appeal. It's in the constitution. No institution that is an integrity institution would undermine that right to appeal. When persons to their counsel have come out to say, we're appealing this, um, um, these findings, we must expect those pronouncements, we must respect the process, and you do not want to, you know, waste the precious little resources that we have. When you know at the end of the day, if you were to initiate investigations, counsel would apply for a stay of execution, and that would abort whatever investigations you have, you have commenced. Mm. I, I think I noticed something very quickly, crucial. Quickly, we have to move saying. over. Mm -hmm. We are not saying the same thing, sir. The issues referred to the ACC, judgment was not made on those issues. The issues in which the COI made judgment would not interfere with them. For instance, the seizure of property would not interfere with that. That is a judgment. Yes. But those matters that we are referred to, we are referred to the ACC, we are not conclusive. I'm saying the it's reference is subject of appeal. The but entire reference. No, no, that, no, that reference is not subject of appeal because a decision was not made on it. No decision. What were the decisions made on the references given to us? In fact, what was written, the reference was very, very clear, very, very instructive. Investigate, continue the investigations based on your mandate. They didn't say these issues we sent to you, we found them wanting on A, B, C, D. It's different. They could appeal for those in which the CEO had already made decisions. You think in, in which they are conclusive. The is not adverse? No, it is not. They, they referred them to it, it, Father it, it, Christmas it, 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 at St. Mary's supermarket. It, 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 it is not, my lord. It so is give not, them sir. Christmas bonuses? <laughs> it is not, sir. It's adverse, sir. Listen, sir. I know, we I know we've, got, we've gotten we the, the to legal arguments. Let's, 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 let's go. Um, I would see that's quite a very Let me bring CD in. I want you to relax. Let me bring in CD. CD, of course, you've listened to the callers. You've listened to the messages I read. Now, Going forward, um, what 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 what, what um, should Sierra Leoneans now ex uh, expect from from uh, former President Koma? Because like all of us <coughs> have um, alluded to, he's a towering figure. He still commands um, a huge following. So um, the fact that um, many have agreed that um, he, he did not um, take advantage of a, uh, of a golden opportunity to have come out to tell these guys that oh guys give the, um, give the ACC. If you will let them come and do their job, I'm committed to this. Of course, like you mentioned in that telephone interview, he has answers to all, all of the, the, the things that uh, people are talking about. What, what's next? I mean, the, the fact of the matter is um, his commitment to um, this whole accountability issue uh, is unshakable. Uh, he's still open to that. And uh, so are uh, all the other uh, persons of interest. But of course, uh, the emphasis always has to be on uh, what we have been trumpeting all along, and that is to ensure that we do this process in a way that no one is feeling harassed uh, mindlessly, no one uh, is feeling uh, intimidated unnecessarily, or no one is feeling that uh, he's being targeted for character assassination or whatsoever. So, so, so going forward, um, um, I mean, it is good that uh, his legal team and his ACC are still uh, uh, engaging, mm -hmm. and we hope that they will continue uh, in that manner. The only thing that I will say here is, whilst I, I, uh, it is regrettable that uh, you know there were 
the the road the entrance to his residence was crowded which may have impeded the um, <laughs> entrance but let me say this oh that at no point acc attempted to have access or to even go to the residence of the former president they let us not. make that they did not let us make that very clear okay. here go ahead. they did not that is one point that i need to make very very clear mm. two that even where they felt you know, uh, insecure based because of what they may have seen on social media. The security attached to the former president, you know he has state securities, mm -hmm. offered together with his legal team to even go and drive them in their own vehicles just so that their safety is you know, will be guaranteed. Now, I understand Francis Benkefala may have done what any leader could do, putting the safety of uh, his staff you know above everything else and based on what he saw on social media probably decided to withdraw his staff and return them back to freetown without going ahead with the interview that is understandable but i needed to make those points very clear because the impression given uh to the public is that because of those roadblocks the acc staffs were not were able to and uh, yeah they were prevented to enter the the, the, the residence to do the interview well, going forward, we have agreed here, you know, let... That next time you will not be going to Martini. <laughs> that <laughs> let's uh, I mean, let this, let this be done in a way that, um, you know, uh, what everyone is interested in, including the former president himself, is to, you know, ensure that the interview goes ahead. Uh, his question and what the ACC wants to question him on. He's prepared for that. He's committed to that. His legal team is prepared for that. They are committed to that. So we hope and pray that uh, going forward, it can be handled differently and properly so that all of these unnecessary tensions and voices we are hearing, audios, videos, will not be the case. Our work to cleanse Sierra oh, Leone of corruption continues in McKinney today, but some of our compatriots have hijacked that highway to prevent us from interviewing former President Kroma. Um, they have deployed roadblocks and violence, but our team is on standby to complete the task. And that's, that um, was tweeted by, yeah, you were coming, that was tweeted by um, the, the commissioner, Francis Benkai yeah, Fala. And yes, and um, CD is saying, your, your guys did not make any attempt to, to go to the house. <laughs> you know, we could not leave our offices because the conditions, the security conditions were unfavorable. We did a lot of security assessment. Don't forget that when this I mean, you did not leave Sweet Town? We left Sweet Town. Okay. We went to McKinney. We are in our offices, the regional headquarters, ACC regional headquarters mm -hmm. in, in the north, the McKinney office. We are holed up in the McKinney office. We could not come out because we thought uh, the security, or those assessing the security situation, don't forget that we work in complementarity with other national institutions of government, especially law enforcement and intelligence agencies. So the law enforcement and intelligence agencies came to us that the assessments of the situation would not allow us to proceed out of the office. Mm. So that was the situation. Okay, Mr. Minister. Yeah, so um, for the benefit of everybody else, I think this is a very nice quote and coming from a very revered um, attributed to a very revered um, West African um, who has made a name for himself at home and abroad, Professor Walsho Inka, Nobel Peace Prize winner. And I quote, only in Africa will thieves be regrouping to loot again and the youth whose future is being stolen will be celebrated. Sounds very, very, very interesting for me. Yeah. You know. So, <coughs> let us now go to the next question. <coughs> I mean, from the various um, callers and texters, there is near um, all-round condemnation of um, the situation that happened in McKinney. Mm. So, meaning, Sierra Leoneans want peace, stability, and tranquility to be able to go about mm -hmm. their normal mm -hmm. businesses. Mm -hmm. And if former President Kroma has not been able to condemn it, citizens across the divide have condemned it, including some who called in for McKinney. I mean. Um, as former president having led this country for 11 years, it's, it, it's an opportunity, a big one, an honor and a privilege out of 7.3 million people to be given now. 
So one of the enduring legacies we should have is a thriving democracy, a peaceful and stable nation. And at every opportunity, you should be able to, to play your part to stabilize the situation, which in that case he failed, right? Um, he has, um, we also talk about the situation people have called um, for leadership in material moments like this. So how do I want, what do I want to say? Mm -hmm. Essentially, to reiterate and re echo the words of His Excellency during the official receipt of um, the COI findings, recommendations, and the White Paper. He did say that the White Paper recommendations, as approved by Cabinet, will be fully implemented, and that anybody who dares stand in the way of the implementation will face the fullest force of the law. I mean, we do not want to hand over, we do not want to bequeath a lawless country to, to the next generation. He's always said, the commissions of inquiry are as much about the previous administrators as, as they are about us currently serving. And he's warned us at every opportunity that, look, uh, this is desire that this might be the last commissions of inquiry in the hope of that, you know, when they told in front falls in the pit, the other's man will take caution mm -hmm. in the hope that we will learn valuable lessons and not go down the same slippery path, right? But in the unlikely event, something like that happens. So that is why he's taking this every time. It's not weakness. It's simply because he's a very, very um, scrutinous person, very thorough. He's not whimsical. Right? Mm. All right. Um, le let's, let's now, so we'll round up this conversation, Augustine. Now, um, the situation could have uh, been handled prop um, <coughs> properly or <coughs> better in a better yeah. manner. Now, what needs to be done to ensure that, um, that you are all in for accountability, um, that we get this process um, smoothly done? You, you know, I think, um, you know, um, um, I mean, both sides, yes. I mean, the yes. ACC and the APC. Yes. Um, firstly, I think, in terms of the, I mean, all the dram dramatic occurrences, mm -hmm. you know, around the precincts of the former president, uh, we don't need a repeat of that. I mean, we're, we live in a fragile society, and just a little spark of fury could land us into those dark days. You know, that's why it's incumbent on politicians that we do not stoke flames. You know, it's, it's an accountability process which the former president has not said, oh, I am not going to, I'm going to challenge this process. No, he said that he submitted to the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that commitment of submission um, should be consistent with how he handles Absolutely. other persons who are seeking to thwart that process. And it's, it's, it, it, it should not be um, equivocal, should be unequivocal. Mm. A statement clear that the ACC is just doing their job and um, access should be given to them. You know, and, and, and somebody mentioned that it's a sad day for Vasilium. Uh, Absolutely. Because just the spectacle that a former president has been summoned to account broadens the horizon of our democracy. Mm -hmm. Just a spectacle, and he's not been convicted. Just a statement being obtained from him. I mean, that is being said without prejudice to my position on the Constitution mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in terms of whether mm -hmm. ACC can even do what they're doing. Without prejudice. But assuming that the process was on all fours with the Constitution, I am saying that the APC, the former, the former president is chairman and leader of the APC, must ensure that state institution gets adequate access to do their job. And that spectacle in, 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 in McKinney, I, I, I think I tweeted about it, yeah, it's did. sad. Sad, nobody's gonna condone it because I grew up during the dark days of the Civil War. I always tell people that my childhood was stolen by the Civil War. Nobody wants their children to go through a repeat of that. Mm -hmm. So we have to do more. The APC is not on our indictment. The former president is being investigated by the ACC. If he's cancelled, the battery of lawyers is got. If they feel strongly that this process offends the constitution, they know what to do. But if they've submitted to the process, they must ensure that the state institution does their business without hindrance. We have to be very clear. We cannot 
We cannot be um, 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 ambiguous about this. So it has to be clear, clear access, and clear um, 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 opportunity for the ACC to do their job. On the other hand, in terms of the police and the ACC, the leaked audio is not it's not very yeah. like, it's not very um, um, it's not very pretty to put it mildly. We must ensure that the state um, security agencies step up security to <coughs> ensure that they agree on a venue, on a time and circumstances that would not trigger um, anything similar to what we experienced on Thursday past. Yeah. Okay, Alassan. Um, the ACC would continue to respect His Excellency the Ex-President, Dr. Ernest Michael Omar. We will treat him with the respect he deserves as an ex-president. We appreciate and want to be on record that the ex-president ex has spoken to us using various channels, severally. Um, I'm insisting his commitment to respecting the processes, his willingness to submit himself to questioning, and his willingness to respond to those questions. You know, um, Mr. Mawa here made a very important reference, which I think could help to buttress the issue of uh, um, jurisdiction. The lawyers representing not only the, 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 the ex-president, so many other people of interest that we are talking to, all those lawyers are extremely brilliant lawyers, and they've not questioned the jurisdiction of the ACC. Another the lawyer has actually questioned that on Twitter right now. So I'm saying the lawyers. So I'm saying the lawyers <laughs> yes, that ahead. are representing <laughs> our persons of interest uh -huh. in their dealings with us, mm -hmm. in our negotiations, <laughs> they've not brought up the issue of jurisdiction. Very, inter if very if interesting on Twitter. If, <laughs> if, if these lawyers mm -hmm. believe, and I know they are super smart, mm -hmm. that we had no jurisdiction, <coughs> but let us know that. That they are even complying with us shows that they respect the fact that um, we have jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. It's very clear. And I can assure anyone who will deal with these issues fairly, judiciously, mm -hmm. with equity, respect for the rule of law, mm -hmm. and ensure that uh, whatever decision we are taking, whether to charge or not to charge, would only be influenced by the facts before us. Okay. CB? Why not? Because <laughs> he's, he's a defender. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm going to be. you have to give me this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not. <laughs> uh, I mean, the fact of the matter here is that, uh, you know, going forward, um, it is good that um, even the former president has repeatedly, um, you know, made it clear his uh, commitment to this process still. And uh, we as a party also will continue to state it that uh, we are not against accountability, transparency, or fight against corruption in any way or, or shape or form. I mean, in fact, when you look at um, the fight against corruption in, in this country, the records are there from the, the laws that uh, we put forward to, you know, the, the, the things that we introduced, the pay no bribe campaigns, the number of ministers that were prosecuted during the tenure reign of President, former President Koma, heads of parastatals, the records are there. So we are in no way against um, that. But uh, we will continue to speak also against any issue or anything that violates any provisions within our laws, our constitution, and also will continue to support those pers persons of interest who think that they have been uh, maliciously targeted for you know, their characters to be blemished or wrongfully accused. But um, we'll encourage the ACC, as they have uh, continued to engage with the lawyers of the, lead of the former president, let them continue in that manner so that at the end of the day, we are able to have um, this interview done with and I close also with, uh, you know, an advice to my elder brother here. Mm -hmm. Never use social media as your source of facts. <laughs> I see you're making reference to a lot of videos. I say here that a lot of those videos are uh, you're saying of uh, some of those. 
these are some are old videos and <laughs> also <laughs> some are clearly montage when you i have seen quite a, a few of them myself some of the languages when you listen to them i mean i'm not a member of any secret society so i don't <laughs> know if they have certain yeah, language a member. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> all right no, no, no. so because i mean certain languages you hear i mean they are strange mm -hmm. you know that these are not you know Sri Alunia languages but uh, in any case we hope this whole issue will be addressed differently and then at the end of the day we will continue to have peace and tranquility in this country all right mr minister well so yes uh, picking up on the limb from where my brother stopped mm -hmm. uh, i listened to the inspector general of police right and don't forget i also sit on the national security council meeting mm. so when i say it i say it with, mm -hmm. with absolute authority Right, I, I'm not relying on social media material. I just quoted that ASAP attributed to Ochenka from social media, and but that is fact. He's always <laughs> been talking about, you know, criminals regrouping to come back to take over, and the victims of bad governance mm -hmm. are the very pawns on the chessboard, so becoming double victims in the process. Okay, so um, as government, I like to reiterate uh, President Bill's commitment to ushering in a new dawn of accountability and transparency in our governance process, mm. right? That is why even in the recent um, um, white paper, you see there are seven, mini <coughs> seven members of this administration, including a sitting colleague who has been asked to step aside so that due process could be served, the ends of justice could be served, right? So this is no lip service. It is a similar vein that I call on His Excellency the former president to also now go beyond lip service and do this cooperation yeah, with the ACC so that you know um, he could contribute to sustaining the peace which he also played a part in bringing to the country. At the moment, I know he's been exporting peace to other countries. So it's about time that we kept some home and he has a key role to play in that. Um, the spectacle I saw that day, the Sokobanas and all of that, you cannot, you cannot usher in democratic accountability and show willingness to submit to a civil democratic accountability process by having those people around, you know, making the place literally ungovernable. I listen to all kinds of despicable, unspeakable, and unprincipled invectives, right? I know these things were organized, orchestrated, funded, well lubricated, and enough incitement done to hype the young people that I saw that day, okay. right? In the end, this war against corruption is in the interest of the very people of Sierra Leone. Um, the Anti-Corruption Commission has been able to recover huge sums of money. His Excellency has committed part of that to constitute seed money that will be used to build a diagnostic hospital so that Sierra Leoneans who cannot afford to travel abroad will have access to, you know, top-notch um, diagnostic opportunities. In the same vein, proceeds from this exercise will go to pro poor um, adventure right. enterprises, like His Excellency has always noted. So this is not um, a war to benefit the SLPP administration. This is a war led by the president on behalf of the people of Sierra Leone who voted in president. Okay. Because corruption has hemorrhaged this country for far too long. All right. Thank you very much, um, gentlemen. Cindy Yaya Tunis from the All People's Congress Party. Mohamed Aman Suare, Minister of Information and Communications. Al Hassan Kagu. Deputy Director of um, Public Education, um, Anti-Corruption Commission, of course, lawyer um, Sorifembe Mara. It's a pleasure having all four of you here uh, this evening. Thank you very much for your time, gentlemen. And that's all we have time for in tonight's um, program. Many thanks to our panelists, of course, for giving us their time. And to our, our lovely audience, thank you for staying with us and participating in the program. Be sure to catch a fresh edition next week, same time here on your home of all things credible, factual, and all times balanced. And of course, a repeat of this comes up on Thursday, 4 p.m. Coming up after this will be uh, primetime news. I am Samuel Wise Dongo saying good night.